Al Utten had the soul of a builder. That was his essential identity. He had the creative eye and the drive to use materials at hand to build something new. Al was one of the most versatile academics that I knew. He was, above all, Al, a man of peace. He liked to settle controversy, but he hated to engender it. He was all about answering the question, how can we fairly, efficiently, and sustainably share the natural wealth of the earth? If he was interacting with you, what came across first was his genuine interest in you, your family, your ideas, and he was inclusive. So if you were sitting at the table in the room or occasionally even just the lobby, he would go seek you out, get your involvement, and an actual transaction, I would say, occurred in which you gave him your viewpoint and he gave back to you his enthusiasm and appreciation for what you had just said. When I started out, I was going to write a synopsis of his career, but I, uh, I understood it only in terms of these various hats he wore as law professor, as an international water lawyer. I didn't see how all these pieces fit together. I began to see that his work was much bigger than I had understood. It was much more original and far more visionary than I had ever understood before. He was really a synthesizer across disciplines and across countries because he convened people from different countries to focus on issues, groundwater, is the one that I think is easiest for people to understand. All along the border between the United States and Mexico, there are groundwater aquifers all along that border and there are people on both sides of the border drawing groundwater. He was interested in developing a shared uh, understanding of these resources, of their actual dimensions and then developing collaboratively with all these people on both sides of the border model agreements about how these, share, these waters would be shared. He would commission background papers from all the disciplines that were relevant to the solution of the problem. And you had to be data driven. I mean, you had to get the data and the research that was there to pull it together. And then he would convene, usually in a very attractive location, particularly by a beach with a margarita in hand, convene practitioners and academics alike, and you'd hammer on this subject with the background of these papers until you tried to forge a consensus. And that was the genius behind Al's uh, uh, embracing preventative diplomacy. Um, w when folks uh, are friends and, and crisis hits, uh, they're willing to work together, uh, they're willing to share, they're willing to compromise. Uh, when you don't have pre-existing relationships and times of crisis arrive, uh, you don't have the time to uh, build those relationships uh, and generally you go directly into conflict. To understand the full arc of Al's life, I kind of had to go relive it, uh, sort of piece by piece, and see how the pieces fit together, and realize that there was a story here, a development, a transformation of this young man who came out of Aztec, New Mexico, a very remote Four Corners town. And the neat thing about writing it was getting access to these letters that had been forgotten. They were letters Al had written home to his parents when he left in 1949 to go to Albuquerque and become a freshman, a geology major at University of New Mexico. What they reveal is just the many transformations that he underwent as he developed and became who we now know him to be. And being able to track them in his words is just marvelous. After becoming the student body president at the University of New Mexico, he was urged to apply for a Rhodes Scholarship. And he went to Oxford, starting out as a geology major, switching to law. 
It was towards the end of my first year studying at Oxford. When I met him, immediately he was very distinguishable from most of the people that were there. He was accessible, interesting, handsome, and such a, such a wonderful personality. Then he took off on these vacations, which are part of the Rhodes Scholar experience, these long vacations, and started traveling Europe and taking every advantage of seminars that were open to college students. And that's how he ended up at what I think was the pivotal event of his college years at Oxford. And it was to attend the Salzburg Seminar in American Studies in Austria in January of 1955. There he met up with sort of intellectuals from across Europe, mainly uh, more uh, mature academics. He was really, really moved by that experience. But he became an internationalist in that period of his life. I mean, he was interested in the international world, but he had never thought of operating there, I don't think, before. He really came back to his state when he had many other options. And he chose his own path. It wasn't a conventional one. He wasn't looking to become a very successful, rich lawyer, so much as he was looking for finding something worthwhile that was interesting, productive for him and for other people. Al was able to forge bipartisan, even multipartisan agreements uh, from a diverse set of values. Uh, his, his own pluralistic view of the world and the relevance of everybody's values enabled him uh, to do that. One of our main goals here at the Utton Center is, is to keep Al Utton's legacy alive. Um, and that is so much more than just good scholarship. Uh, that's so much more than um, developing our understanding of international natural resource issues. Um, that's, that's keeping alive the, the spirit of, of joy, uh, the spirit of friendship, um, the, the spirit of problem solving uh, before problems get too bad. People who've never heard of him, I hope they will enjoy the stories of his youth and the way he sort of brought a whole time uh, of period, the early 50s, uh, into focus in the letters he wrote home and the experience of going around Europe in the aftermath of the war and all the thinking that prompted in him. I also hope they will see how far-sighted his work was and realize that it isn't over. We need to take up the causes that he was pushing so hard for, the comedy, international comedy and agreements and friendship that he just championed so much of his life.